All right, we now have our engine in place. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the radiator in. As you can see, I have a hose on this side of the radiator, but not the other, because for the sake of uh, disassembly, or if you're changing hoses, it's easier to mount the hose on the radiator first for this side, and it's easier to have the hose on the engine side over opposite of that. Now we need to go in there. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze around this hose, but the side with the electric fan, if you drop that in first, that'll be the way to go. You'll have more clearance if you remove the hose, but once again, if, if you're proficient with this, you'll know where to go with it all. There we are. Now when you get your radiator down to the bottom, there are two locating holes and there's a rubber, rubber mounts on the bottom of the radiator itself that'll fit into the core support at the bottom of the frame here. And you're going to have mounting holes at the top of the radiator. They're going to line up above the grill. That'll help you locate everything where you need it. And now I'm going to slide on my radiator hose. And this trans this radiator goes, which is original to this car, goes for an automatic transmission which you're going to have the uh, fittings there for the auto tranny lines. But in this case, you don't have to do anything with them, you can just leave them be there. A lot of times if you buy an aftermarket radiator or a replacement, it's going to have those tubes there anyway. So now we have our radiator in place, we can insert our radiator screws, which these are not original, these must be something else, but they are metric screws and they do fit. All right, I'm installing the clutch fan. I don't know how well you can see here. But here's our fan. I have one bolt left to do. And I'm gonna use my 7 8 or 22 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter open end wrench. Uh, if you line up your uh, fan shaft, you will see that there is a uh, flat spot on there that is designed for you to grab onto it with your open end wrench like so. And that allows you to hold the whole work still as you go ahead and tighten down your 10 millimeter nuts. Now the flat spot is in, in one position so you can only grab onto the fan in one direction and then 180 degrees from that direction which you can get two of these uh, nuts at a time. Uh, the shorter fans that are commonly found on XT's and turbos I believe are flat all the way around that you can grab onto from any position. Um, this can be kind of a tedious pain in the ass if you're not familiar with it. Uh, usually what it resorts to to thread these nuts on is to do it with the tips of your fingers. Well, just because you can't really get it on there with both fingers, you almost have to thread the nut on with one finger. But once you get them on there, this is what it takes to tighten them down. And uh, if you have a, a gear wrench, that that is always good too. It saves you a lot of flipping your tool every time you need to get another turn. Okay, now we've got that on there, ready to install our belt. Um, we are going to install the shorter belt first, because it rides on the inside, and then the alternator belt rides on the outside. So I'm going to start by slipping my belt over the fan, and once I have it over the fan, I'm going to come around the back side of the crank pulley, over the power steering pump, and around the reluctor for the uh, AC. Uh, you can get the belt to slide through behind the reluctor, but this cover plate is designed to come off if it gets in your way. I've just installed the inner belt. It was a little bit of a pain to get around the pulleys where by the time you get it to the back side of one, you're stuck in the groove on the front. So it's a little bit to rotate rotate the pulleys to walk it on, similar to resetting the chain on your bicycle. Now that I have that belt on there, I'm ready to tighten it up. Um, 
this is down here below the shot that I can't get the camera close to the car is our hexagonal piece that I've explained in our previous procedures. Um, we were ready to tighten our bolt, our tensioner pulley. Uh, for us, our tensioner pulley has a hex built onto it that allows us to grab and apply tension to the pulley to take the slack out of our belt. And I find this easiest to do with an open end wrench. And with that, you can grab the, uh, the little 12 millimeter hex on the other side and tighten that down. Once you tighten this down, that'll lock our pulley into place. And then we can go ahead and tighten the other nut at the pivot point here. All right, and there we have our uh, power steering belt. Now onto the alternator belt. The alternator is pretty self-explanatory. I'm probably wasting tape here trying to explain this to you. But for demonstration purposes, you're going to see it happen. The slider belt around the fan. Typically there's a fan shroud here, but this is a newer radiator than the car, so there is not one. I'm going to start around the crank pulley, come up over the power steering. It's a little bit of a fit under the reservoir. And then once again, over the air AC. Now as I bring my belt up, for the alternator I want to make sure that it lines up in the groove on the water pump. There's two bolts on the alternator. You have this one here that it pivots and then you have the other bolt that locks it into place. And I'm going to draw the alternator up, take the slack. Usually I'll take a small wrench or whatever, or well, not quite a small wrench, pry it in there, give a little lift up on the alternator. And then I will tighten down the bolt on the bottom side of it. And then once I have that in place, take that out and then go ahead and tighten up the top bolt. The top bolt has a nice captive piece here so you don't have to hold it still. All you gotta do is make sure it's on there when you put your bolt through. But we never did remove the alternator from this, we just swung it out the way the whole time we had this apart.